Well, hey guys, if you're new here, I'm Dr. Dre. I'm a board certified dermatologist. Today, I'm gonna be covering some skin signs that really mean a lot more than you might think. Like I've said before, your skin is a window to what is going on internally. Now, most skin changes are common and benign, meaning not anything to worry about. Understanding why they happen though can help you treat them effectively, and if anything, help you to not worry so much. Reminder, today's video is not about diagnosing anything. We're not gonna be self-diagnosing after we We've watched this video, but rather it's about recognizing patterns. So let's get into some common skin findings and what they actually mean. Let's start with cracked corners of your mouth, otherwise known as angular chelitis. This shows up as redness and scaling at the corners of the mouth, often with painful cracks. The main driver of this in most cases is pooling of saliva at the corners of your mouth. This can be the result of lip licking, poorly fitted dentures, drooling, chewing a lot of gum. Some people's mouth naturally turns down at the corners and is more inclined to collect saliva there. This moist environment favors colonization and overgrowth of candida yeast from within the mouth, leading to this creamy white exudate. Now, in some cases, angular chelitis can also be associated with an underlying nutritional deficiency, such as a B vitamin deficiency or iron deficiency, but that's not as common as saliva being the main culprit. Treatment usually focuses on protecting the corners of the mouth with some sort of barrier protectant. I like to recommend petroleum jelly because it is like one of the best and has the greatest longevity. So some people also use zinc oxide uh, paste like diaper rash cream. If there is candida yeast there, treating that with a topical antifungal such as myconazole. And of course, avoiding the behaviors like lip licking and chewing gum that lead to more saliva collecting there. I don't suggest just arbitrarily taking supplements to correct this unless your doctor has told you to because you have a confirmed underlying nutritional deficiency that is causing it. Number two is dry cracked heels. This is a very common issue. The stratum corneum on the soles of our feet is very thick and it can dry out and become cracked. Factors like low humidity, walking barefoot can be underlying factors. With age and with menopause, skin produces fewer lipids and is more inclined to dryness in general. Despite what you might hear online, dry cracked heels are usually almost always not caused by some sort of underlying nutritional deficiency or a food that you're eating. I swear the internet wants to blame food for all of life's problems. The key here is consistent barrier repair and protecting the heels. Look for ointments. They have better longevity and allow for better penetration of ingredients that are actually gonna target the dry cracked heels. What ingredients in ointments? Salicylic acid and urea are fantastic as well as alpha hydroxy acids like glycolic, lactic, and mandelic. Y'all already know I'm a huge fan of the carousel intensive foot ointment. It works amazing for this. Also make sure that you cover your feet with socks. Walking around barefoot does not help this issue. <laughs> Treat the cracks with a little drop of crazy glue to glue the skin back together to allow the skin to actually heal. Really can help because those cracks, not only are they painful, but they serve as a portal of entry for bacteria and fungi and can cause skin infections. Next is something called acanthosis nigricans. This appears as dark and thickened skin, usually on the sides or the back of the neck, it can happen on the sides of your face, the backs of your hands, and your underarms and your groin. Many people mistake this as hyperpigmentation, but it's not hyperpigmentation. It is a type of skin thickening and it is a warning sign of insulin resistance. Insulin-like growth factor actually can bind to receptors on keratinocytes in your epidermis, cause it to hyperproliferate and lead to, well, acanthosis nigricans. And so if you have this condition uh, before reaching for whatever TikTok remedy for underarm lightening you saw, make sure you see your healthcare provider because it is a warning sign for insulin resistance. It won't go away with whatever cream du jour people are claiming will take it away. Instead, you need to address the underlying insulin resistance or in order for it to improve. Check out some of my videos on acanthosis is nigricans. I do talk about ingredients that can help it once you are addressing the insulin resistance, of course. Things like topical retinoids, although those are not well tolerated under the arms. Addressing the underlying metabolic issue is key. Next is asteatotic eczema. Wow, that is a fancy name. Not something we have really talked about much on my channel, even though I do talk about eczema a lot. This is also called eczema crackele. crackele. Asteatotic eczema is actually a frequently encountered condition on Often on the lower legs, you get basically really, really dry skin that leads to uh, what looks like, quote unquote, a dry riverbed. The dry riverbed sign of asteatotic eczema. This is something that older adults commonly have. Uh, with age, like I said, your skin does not produce the barrier components as readily, and so you are more inclined to dry skin. It's usually a sign of overbathing with long, hot showers, using too many soaps. Uh, that's you know a reason why I caution. Most people don't really need to be using soap on their legs 
And this is a big uh, problem that can arise from over soaping one's lower legs, especially as you get up there in years. Medications you might be on as an older adult to manage things like blood pressure can make your skin more inclined to dryness. Throw in a long over the top hot shower with like an aggressive bar soap that is not, you know, really super gentle and disrupts your skin barrier pH even further. Yeah, it is a recipe for asteatosis. And the way to get on track with this is one of my favorites, petroleum jelly, and then addressing your bathing habits, keeping the shower short, um, not using really hot water, avoiding soap on your legs. Like, especially for older adults, they, they really don't need to be soaping their legs. Honestly, um, they really, really don't. Um, older adults end up oftentimes needing to bathe less frequently because they just don't make as much uh, body oils and things of that sort. So that would be key. And also a humidifier in the bedroom can make a difference. Moisturizers with urea or uh, ammonium lactate can really get in there and address the dry cracked skin as well. And lactin lotion, I love here. I think it's really good. It does sting though. So just keep that in mind. If you're actively in the throes of it, you might want to start with just plain petroleum jelly. Then the uh, ammonium lactate can really help hydrate up the skin and prevent it from recurring so long as you address the bathing. On the flip side, you might develop oily skin out of the nowhere, right? All of a sudden, why does my skin look so greasy? When this happens, most people want to point their finger at a skincare product, but in reality, skincare products have nothing to do with your sebaceous gland putting out more oil. That is driven by hormones. So hormonal fluctuations can explain a sudden increase in oiliness. Puberty is a big one, uh, but most of the people I assume watching my channel have already gone through puberty. Um, and you, in fact, may be more likely to actually be approaching or going through or have gone through another hormonal life my milestone in women at least, and that is perimenopause into menopause. Maybe you have just had a baby, you are pregnant, or maybe you just started or stopped a birth control pill. All of these hormonal shifts can make the skin more oily. If you're a man, maybe you have recently started taking some sort of testosterone replacement therapy. Maybe you're taking some sort of performance enhancing drug, um, which women take too, uh, either men or women. But uh, those things can actually drive more oil production. Testosterone replacement therapy, you know, performance enhancing drugs will make you oilier for sure. And if you get oily skin, it can then lead to secondary skin issues as a result, namely overgrowth of malassezia, seborrheic dermatitis, tinea versicolor, acne. So an increase in oiliness can be secondary to hormonal shifts. Skincare doesn't really address the oiliness, but washing your face is a good thing to remove some of that oil. A clay mask can also help to remove excess oil from the skin surface. It's a good idea to remove that oil because if left behind on the skin, it creates a favorable environment for overgrowth of malassezia and those skin problems. And it also can oxidize, be very inflammatory. But there's not like a skincare ingredient per se that shuts that oil down. There is a topical medication um, called Clascoderone, which is used to treat acne that can help to reduce the oil production. But other than that, there's not really like a targeted topical for the sebum per se. A big thing though is don't go over the top with trying to exfoliate and be real aggressive with overwashing because that can just impair your skin barrier. The oiliness is not really doing much for the skin barrier. So don't jeopardize your skin barrier in an effort to unoily yourself. <laughs> Here's one that a lot of people don't uh, realize and that is the rinse off pattern of eczema. What do I mean by that? All of a sudden you have like itchy red, maybe even oozy rashes uh, behind your ears, on your ears, um, along your hairline, the sides of your neck. This is a rinse off pattern. So it's probably something in your shampoo that you're allergic to because that's the thing that you're going to be rinsing off of your head most likely. Allergies to ingredients in shampoo can and do happen. Some of the most common allergens in shampoos that people, you know, mount allergy to are going to be fragrances and the preservatives, methyl isothiazolinone or methyl chloroisothiazolinone. That's why I'm always pointing those out in my Dollar Tree shopping videos. Like, oh, this shampoo's got that preservative. Yeah, because I don't want you guys having rinse off eczema. Also can creep onto your eyelids as well, give you an eyelid dermatitis. And people may not make that connection. Yeah, your scalp will be irritated in many cases, but not always. Other allergens include cocomethyl purple betaine. So it could actually be your conditioner that's commonly in conditioners, as well as um, tea tree oil. Tea tree oil is a big one. Lavender oil, spearmint, peppermint. In order to know what you're allergic to in your shampoo, you need to see a board certified dermatologist for something called patch testing. From there, once they determine the allergy, then you know you can look to avoid that ingredient. That, that's, that's how you address that. But putting it all together, when it comes to skin problems, the distribution pattern matters a lot. It kind of tells you a story. Patterns of distribution of the rash, meaning where the heck is the rash?
rash. That can tell you quite a bit about your skin barrier, about what you're coming in contact with. It can be a big picture thing. So final thoughts. These are just some clues, some potential warning signs that I wanted to point out here because knowledge is power, right? But like I said at the beginning of the video, this is not meant for you to take this information and self-diagnose, but rather if you have a skin problem, see a board certified dermatologist for accurate diagnosis. Knowing the diagnosis, knowing what you actually have is so powerful. It will save you a lot of time, money, headache, and it'll save your skin because if you don't have the right diagnosis, you might pursue some useless thing that only aggravates it. The condition goes unchecked, untreated, it gets worse. I mean, see a dermatologist if you have a skin problem. All right, guys, I hope this video was fun, informative, educational. Now, on this channel, I have a whole playlist on skin warning signs of health not to miss. Okay, these are some really popular videos that I have here on my channel that a lot of people don't know exist because they come here for like either Dollar Tree shopping videos or they come here to learn about a Korean serum that's so trending on TikTok and they don't realize that I also talk a lot about dermatology and the skin manifestations of internal diseases and conditions. So check that playlist out if you are at all interested in health and you know how your skin gives clues. I have a lot of info there, thyroid disease, heart disease, estrogen, testosterone, we cover it all. So check out that playlist for sure. This video will land itself there. If you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.